Hi everyone. Today I decided to do a quick video on colors and some of the ideas I have about colors. And just to say right off the bat, I did not go to formal art school. So these ideas are just uh, from my own experience and learning. And also this video will mostly be me talking and not really a lot of uh, photos. I have like one or two max. So anyway, let's get into it. So uh, first I wanted to just talk about um, basically acrylic and oil color paints because uh, those are two that I use a lot and uh, how they might be different from each other. And so for example, the pigments that you use are similar, but in acrylics, it's bound in a, an acrylic polymer. Plastic is basically what it is. And in oil paint, it's bound in, the pigment is bound in an oil. Sometimes there's a filler too, especially in the cheaper or student grade paints that might have extra fillers. But um, the oils are drying oils, so it wouldn't be like olive, like a cooking oil, like olive oil, although it could be walnut oil. Um, but um, it has to be an oil that can dry on, and some oils can't. So um, it's considered a drying oil. And so usually I use a linseed oil, but there's poppy seed. Uh, like I said, walnut oil is a common one our artists choose. So, and some have used safflower, safflower oil as well. So, um, sometimes the oil can affect especially lighter color paints. So, that's why some people think poppy seed, I've heard, is a good choice because they think that the whites uh, with linseed and some of the darker oils might turn yellowish when they dry. So um, I just paint with the linseed oil and um, I'm happy with, I guess, the results. But I guess it, it just depends through trial and error and your own experience what you prefer because everybody has their own preferences. So, but that's just something to keep in mind. So um, now watercolor and gouache paints or gouache, I should say. I like to say gouache, like two syllables. But um, they are also the same pigments, but watercolor is trans, it's always transparent, and then the gouache paint is more opaque and uh, can be blended a little bit better, I think. But um, they uh, are different in that you have the light from the paper uh, that's affecting the color. So you don't have that situation when you're dealing with acrylic and oil because, and even with the opaque gouache paint because it's complete coverage and you don't have the white of the paper shining through. So for example, with watercolor, uh, sometimes I think especially florals look really nice because you get that luminosity of the whiteness of the paper um, that the, it's like a, a transparency, I guess you could say, um, that picks up the white of the paper. So uh, just some things to keep in mind. Also, uh, different paints have different properties. So for example, a lot of the more organic paints, like some are minerals and some are like earthy things like uh, burnt peach pits or, um, and then some are liter literal minerals like cobalt or cadmium or iron oxide. So um, that's something to keep in mind as well. And then the ones that are, they could be plant-based dyes or like I said, like the burnt peach pit um, or something that's uh, more organic. And then there's also synthetic. So a lot of times you'll see if it says genuine, then you know it's the real 
pigment. So for example, a lot of the more expensive or uh, more toxic paints will make a hue substitute or like not, yeah, a substitute um, or option, I guess you could say. And um, it's a man-made synthetic. So like a lot of the cadmiums now have uh, synthetic and you'll see on the paint tube it'll say hue a lot of times if it's the synthetic version and sometimes it won't say genuine but sometimes if they that paint company has both options it might put genuine on the tube if it's the real deal so um, and I don't know I'm sure that they might have slightly different properties because it's it's a synthetic version um, I usually always just use the the real um, because I just feel like it's the original and uh, it's been tried and tested for hundreds of years and so I just know it's going to work and I'm not sure how the man-made's going to show up like a hundred years from now. So even if it looks good going on the paper, so like for example, some watercolors put brighteners in their paints so it looks really good at first but I've heard that they can fade over time and so that's just something that I'm um, concerned about. All right so uh, also some of the properties of different pigments are uh, because they're all different um, some dry faster than others so you might keep that in mind when you're painting because and now this is mostly for the oil paints uh, because the acrylics are all bound in this uh, acrylic polymer plastic that usually dries about the same time um, because the binder is more, um, it kind of balances out the equalities of all the paint, paint properties, I feel. That's just my experience with them. I mean, I've never like actually done lab work to, to test them or anything. Um, but I definitely noticed with the oil paints that, for example, uh, burnt umber is very absorbent and uh, then other paints are less absorbent. So um, sometimes if I do an underpainting of, say, burnt umber, I stopped using it for my underpaint, like uh, for my draw sketching or drawing before I actually get to the painting because uh, you could, it would suck the paint on top of it into the burnt umber uh, that I had put down and leave um, spots or lines if I was using it for a drawing um, or patches, wherever that was. So it's just something to keep in mind. So I actually have taken burnt umber for the most part off my palette and instead use transparent oxide earth orange or red um, it's not quite the same uh, so I have a few other options that I like better than burnt umber too like um, even just the the burnt sienna um, is a little less um, absorbent so but it's more red so it just depends um, there's some other options out there too so just you just need to try and find out from your own experience um, what you prefer. So also like um, oil painting I think classically looks better with oil. Uh, I mean classical style painting I think almost always looks better with oil paint. And, but a lot of the modern art looks better with acrylic because they just have different properties. But And then there's exceptions to those rules as well. So they're not really rules, but um, I just have noticed those things. Uh, okay. And then another thing I was thinking to share with you is, and I feel like this should have been at the beginning of the um, video, but uh, there's different hues. And here I can put up a chart. Okay, and I've never used this before. I just grabbed it off the Creative Commons Wikipedia page. And um, so I didn't know it was as good not going to completely cover the background. I could chop that out, but I think you can see, hang on a second. Okay, that's better. So in the color wheel, uh, we have the red, yellow, and blue. This is just the basic color wheel. And then you have uh, the primary, the 
secondary and tertiary colors, but you also have warm and cool, and that was very confusing to me when I was first learning about color theory, and I didn't understand, or I couldn't even recognize what made, I mean, I did understand, like, orange was definitely a warm color, but there's even, like, cool oranges, so, like, for example, a neon is more cool than a, a fall, a more, you know, golden orange color. So, um, especially with the blues, people were saying the ultramarine is a warm blue, and I just didn't see that because I equated in my mind ultramarine with the sea, which is water, which is always cool to me. Uh, so it's just about training your eye um, to see which colors are warm and which is cool. But, um, yeah, definitely there's w warm hues and cool hues. Okay, I also found this picture online in Creative Commons, which means it's copyright free. You can, anyone can use it, but for some reason, it's cutting off the the left right yeah the left half of the color wheel. But I mainly wanted to focus on this uh, graph on the top uh, right anyway that talks about the hue, saturation, and lightness, because um, all the hues would be like the colors around the wheel, and then you have the saturation would be. Uh, a lot of times in the color wheel, closer to the edge of the um, the circumference of the circle, uh, you have more saturation, so you'll have the most intense color. That would be like colors straight out of the tube, usually. But you usually don't paint with all colors just right out of the tool, tube. That would be like every instrument in the band uh, playing as loud as it could the same notes maybe not even the same notes so you'd just be playing like their most intense practice but it would just be chaos so um that you don't want that in art either uh, when it comes to painting and visual arts and then the lightness is the value so as you can see the bottom is like black and the top is white and so this is just a cut section here, like a cake. And so I thought it was a pretty cool visual. Some people are visual learners, especially artists. So, um, yeah. And so I think I mentioned that there's transparent colors and opaque colors. A lot of the times the transparent colors make the darkest darks for some reason. Uh, when it's opaque, like an opaque black, is never going to be as dark as a transparent black or blue for some reason. It's just the way <clears throat> it works um, when, with oil and acrylic paint at least. So um, just some things to keep in mind. Just um, You're going to get different results also. Some paints are what I call bullies. Like it only takes a small amount to cover. Like for example, if you took phalo blue and cerulean blue and mix them most, both with white, um, you'd get a nice really uh, pale pastel blue with a cerulean and then you'd get a very intense um, staining blue with the phalo. But if you tried to mix um, phalo with red, um, it's not, it's going to almost completely overtake the red, um, especially if it's like equal proportions. You'd need like such a tiny amount and like one to like s quite a few parts of the red um, to balance it out. Whereas with the cerulean blue, the red is probably actually going to overpower the blue. And you would need a ton of the blue to even make a dent into the red. So it's just some things to keep in mind uh, when you're painting. And I didn't mention too much about the watercolor and gouache. Uh, but um, I will say... If you're painting in watercolor, I know that there are some watercolor societies where you're not allowed to use any gouache, which means that for your your highlights and your whitest whites, you would have to literally um, block out and avoid certain areas. 
um, so that it, the white of the paper is literally the white of the painting. And um, if you're not in those societies following the very strict rules of that, um, which I'm not, so I a lot of times will just go over back over with gouache, um, especially coming from the oil painting and acrylic. I usually always do my highlights last, so um, it's nice to be able to just add gouache at the end of your uh, watercolor to add your highlights where you want them. So lastly, I would just encourage you to experiment and have fun. And if you're getting frustrated to take a break, just step away. Um, I would, you would think during lockdown, I would be painting like a mad person, but I'm not. I'm actually spending a lot of time um, right now. It's nice. Well, we've had a lot of rain, actually, but uh, whenever it's nice, I spend a lot of time outside and in nature and trying to uh, just be grounded and get inspired about what I'm going to paint. But uh, then I try to just focus on the painting without any music or uh, like podcasts or anything so I can just be in my element and uh, really focused on what I'm doing and sometimes it's nice to um if i'm doing more like chores with my art like sanding something or cleaning something then i might listen to podcasts or if i'm like cutting out map board where it's like monotonous and it doesn't take a lot of brain power in my creativity because i've done it like a hundred times then that's when i'll watch my podcast but when i'm in my mode of painting at the very most I'll usually listen to like classical music or like movie soundtracks that I like that's um I don't even want the words necessarily because I just want to be really um open-minded about what I'm painting and I don't want a lot of outside influences but I do accept sometimes <laughs> the um, instrumental music, I guess you could say, because I feel like it adds and does, it's not going to um, add anything negative usually to the art. Um, and not that other music's bad. I just think that it might have some influence um, to the art. And I just want to keep it as open to like the connection that I have uh, with whatever inspired that painting to begin with I want that to keep flowing through me if that makes sense and so lastly this is just kind of like my crazy thought here that's not scientific at all but um, I mean maybe it is but um, that when you have that creativity it's possible to I I don't know that maybe um, well I'll tell you why I think this the reason I think this is because I've been asked to repaint things. Uh, maybe I was going to use it um, in a commercial instance. And so I repainted something very similar that because they wanted a certain thing and I didn't have like a high resolution image of it. So I repainted something similar and it never turned out ever. Like even when I tried stroke for stroke to match it, it would never turn out the same and so I just feel like literally sometimes the same colors depending on my mood will show up different on my palette and it's even just like slight nuances in what I mixed it with or maybe even literally how fast I'm mixing it I don't know if that was, those things matter um, but definitely all of that matters it makes a difference and each person's is going to be unique depending on your experience your environment and even your mood and what's going on around you so I don't know if that's going to be the truth for everybody but um that's my I, my experience so I just wanted to leave that and Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and happy painting.